do you feel you missed the chance to explain the monster by leaving Cambridge? There was a lot of momentum built up on the group. Yes. Well, perhaps I'd better say what the monster is. And at why it's called the monster. The monster is uh, the largest of what are called the sporadic simple groups. And groups are the mathematical way of uh, talking about symmetry. And um, so the, it, we're essentially studying different fundamental kinds of symmetry. And um, there are 26 or 27, if you count them rather differently, sporadic simple groups, of which, you know, some of them are my groups, the, the, the one of the symmetry group of the leech lattice and so on that made me, you know, into a jet setter, <laughs> jet setting mathematician. Um, but the largest of them all is this so-called monster group, which was discovered by Bernd Fischer and to some extent independently by Bob Grice. I would love to understand why the monster is there before I die. I've been saying that for more than 20 years now, and uh, I don't expect to, to tell you the honest truth. I, I've given up now, you know, seriously hoping. But every now and then, every five years roughly, I sort of think about it again and usually make some progress. But um, one of these times, uh, was um, when uh, I went with my wife to a conference in Durham in England, and she was actually, I was the spouse for that meeting. She was a mathematician. She attended the lectures, and I sat minding the baby outside, except every now and then when the baby fell asleep, I tiptoed into the back of the uh, lecture room. Um, and um, during that time, I worked on this construction for the monster uh, but used based on an idea of Richard Parker, one of my co-authors of the Atlas. And um, I found this simple construction. It, it, I was Relatively speaking. Sorry? Relatively speaking. Relatively simple, yes. Grice was the first person to actually construct the monster, show that it existed. His paper was 113 pages long and mine was 13 pages long. Well, that's a bit cheating. It had some tables at the end of those 13 pages, which I don't count. That was the first of my real interactions with the monster group. Another one was when I discovered with my friend Simon Norton, also a co-author of the Atlas, uh, this moonshine phenomenon, which was, we wrote a paper called Monstrous Moonshine, uh, which was about some very strange connections of the monster group with uh, modular functions and so on. You worked on moonshine to some extent, and so did my Russian wife, Larissa. That's another interaction with the monster. The Y diagram, yeah, 26 note. Yeah, the Y note. diagram, the 26 note theorem. There are all sorts of, of things. Nothing has given me a feeling that I understand why the monster is there, you know, and I'd love to. I mean, everything is like this. Here's this amazing thing, maybe. Okay. What Grice did was study this amazing thing, on supposing that it existed, and finding out all sorts of properties it had to have. And then eventually he sort of started looking for something with those properties and then found it, was able to construct it. But if he didn't think it existed before he looked, he would never have found it, you know. So his his thing doesn't explain the existence, actually it uses the existence to construct it. Yeah. Um, and uh, then there's my student and our mutual friend, uh, Richard Borchards, who came rather closer than anybody else, I think, to understanding the monster. Um, but I don't feel happy with what we've understood. It's such a beautiful thing and a natural thing. By the way, Grice 
criticised me very strongly for using the term monster for it. I wrote a postcard to Fisher, who was the first discoverer of the monster, saying something like, uh, I've been thinking a lot about your monster simple group. He liked that name. And ever since then, it's been called the monster. And the name has really been good publicity for the group. Yes, I think it has. You know, Grice made the point, and I, I agree with him in a way, that uh, to call it a monster suggests it's sort of ugly or frightening or something. And I wasn't thinking of that at all. I was just thinking of it as being tremendously big, you know. Maybe a bit frightening in a way, but not ugly. Really a beautiful thing. Uh, but, you know, it's very strange. The way I think of it is there's a geometrical object, uh, like the kind of star you might hang on your Christmas tree, you know, uh, which is tremendously symmetrical. And, uh, however, it's very, very big. An icosahedron, one of the regular solids, has uh, 12 vertices. A dodecahedron has 20. And they have... Uh, 120 symmetries, you know, you can view them from 120 different positions and they look the same. Well, the monster, my, it has nearly 10 to the 54 symmetries, a huge number. And where does it live? Well, the geometrical object that supports it is in 196,883 or 4 dimensions. You can't really think of this monster, and yet somehow, collectively, we mathematicians did, you know. And um, I don't understand why it's there, and I really want to. In a sense, we don't know the object it's yeah. act acting as symmetries on is the problem. No, not really. I mean, We know the symmetries, but not the object. Yes, in, in a way. You know, there is an object that's been constructed, but I feel that... Uh, there should be a simple way. I think that something that is so fundamental, so natural, ought to have a simple definition. And, um, you know, I'm still trying. But every time something has turned up about that, and I feel, you know, happy to have discovered something, but um, it's never an explanation. And to tell you the truth, I really have given up, you know, on finding an explanation. No, not given up, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, it might turn up and that's, you know, I hope to be kept alive, but um, I honestly doubt if it will. Um, it's, you know, I think it will eventually, you know, after a century or two.